So for this first example, the natural log of 3x minus 5 is equal to the natural log of x plus 8. We have the log on both sides. So all we have to do is set what's inside the logarithm equal to each other. Okay, so when you've got the same log on both sides, you just set what's inside the logarithm equal to what's inside the other side. Okay, and then we're just solving for x. So subtract x from both sides. 2x minus 5 is equal to 8. Add 5 to both sides. 2x is equal to 13. Divide by 2 x is equal to 13 over 2. Very, very easy to check this, especially with the common law, or with the natural log, excuse me, because you don't have to worry about change of base. Just the log of 3 times 13 over 2, minus 5, and make sure that the log of 13 over 2 plus 8 gives us the same value. And it does. So we're good. 13 over 2 is the solution. All right, same thing with the second example here. We've got the natural log of 2x squared minus x is equal to the natural log of 3x squared plus 2x minus 18. When you have the same log on both sides, you just set what's inside the logarithms equal to each other. Now, this one is a quadratic equation. So, quadratic equation, it's got to be equal to 0. I want to move everything to the side where the x squared is bigger, so I'm going to move it to the right side by subtracting 2x squared and adding x. 0 is equal to x squared plus 3x minus 18. Factor x plus 6 times x minus 3. So that says x equals negative 6 and x equals positive 3. Particularly when you have quadratic equations and you get two solutions, I highly suggest that you check both of them. Um, and uh, I did this in first period, so I know both of them work out. Um, but again, it's very easy. The only thing, be careful. When you're plugging in a negative number, and you're squaring it, make sure you put it in parentheses before you square it, or it will not work out correctly. Okay? Make sure that negative 6 is in parentheses there before you square it, um, or you will not get the same thing on both sides. So let me show you. I typed it in right the first time. I did not type it in right for the right side. And you'll notice, well, I get a non-real answer. Okay, it won't even let me do it, um, but if I go in and I fix it with parentheses, I'll get the same thing. Let me make sure. Yeah, same goes for that. Okay, so both of those check out. All right, this one does not have uh, a natural log on both sides. 5 natural log of x minus 7 is equal to 10. So we've got to start by getting the natural log by itself. In this case, it's being multiplied by 5, so we're going to divide both sides by 5. The natural log of x minus 7 is equal to 2. We're solving for the variable. The variable is stuffed inside of our logarithm. Only way to get it out is to write it in exponential form. But I don't have a base. What is the base of the natural log? E. Very good. Okay, so e squared is equal to x minus 7. Add 7 to both sides. We can't do anything. I mean, we can. We can get a decimal approximation here. Okay, but this is the exact answer. e squared plus 7 is the exact answer. If you wanted to know, you can, of course, type that in. Just make sure you close the parentheses after the 2 before you add the 7. Okay, that's approximately what the answer is. We can check it. 5 natural log of the answer minus 7 and gives us 10. Okay? So this, if you have one like this, that's how I would want you to express the answer. Um, exactly. But if you're curious, 14.38. Okay? 
Uh, you could, yeah, you can square, or what I did was I just typed in E squared plus 7, and then um, when I started to type it in, since that was my last answer, you press the second negative button, and it'll put that number in uh, where you want it. Or you can sort as X, like with Intuit, either way. All right, so... I had originally intended for this to be a ticket out the door problem, but let's just do it as another example. Okay, the natural log of 2 plus the natural log of 3x squared plus 7 is equal to the natural log of 20. If you want to, yeah. If you want to write it on your ticket out the door paper, you can. All right, so I'm going to give you a second. Okay, so if you're not quite sure where to start, we have two logarithms, two natural logs on the left side. They're being added together. We need to convince them. That was why we learned those rules about convincing logarithms. We need to convince them into a single logarithm. When you're adding them, it becomes the logarithm of the product. Now, the only thing you have to remember about that is if one of your logarithms has more than one term, like the 3x squared plus 7, you're going to have to distribute that 2 to the 3x squared plus 7. Uh, that's a common mistake there. Now, we're looking at a problem like the first two that we did. We have the natural log on both sides, so we just set what's inside the logs equal to each other. And then we can solve for x. Subtract 14 from both sides. 6x squared is equal to 6. Divide by 6. x squared is equal to 1. When we take the square root, what do we need to remember? The plus or minus. Anytime you take a square root, remember the plus or minus, and the square root of 1 is 1. So positive and negative 1 should both be solutions to this equation. I definitely want to check the negative 1 because lots of times that can make a, a, a cause an issue. So the natural log of 2, make sure you close your parentheses, plus the natural log of 3, negative 1 in parentheses squared, plus 7. We want to know is that equal to the natural log of 20, and it is. Uh, you could also very easily check the natural log of 1, just get rid of that negative right there, and it also gives the same thing. Okay, So plus and minus 1 are our solutions. <laughs>